Well, we're now awaiting the first of the royal arrivals as the beginning of this very special service of celebration for Commonwealth Day nears. And the first to come in are the Duke and Duchess of Gloucester. Um, both of them working roles, of course, Robert. They are. They're part of this uh, this slim down monarchy, as we call it. But they're very much part of it, and they uh, have uh, their own wide range of charities and organisations. But yes, they are. Um, they're, they're here to support the king. That's what they always do. Um, the Duke of Gloucester. Uh, there we see um, who, who was a, 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 a baby when his uh, his father was Governor General to Australia. He's sort of been raised on the stories of the of the Commonwealth. There he is, talking to the uh, lineup. Uh, that's actually uh, uh, the, the Royal Commonwealth Society members. There's Baroness Scotland, the Secretary General, the Duke of Buccleuch, who's the Keeper of Westminster Abbey. So uh, this is uh, a reminder that today we're going to see um, the, the, all the all the royal team, if you like, um, because that's what the Commonwealth means to the monarchy as a whole. And we can see just behind them, Robert, uh, two very important people, the Commonwealth flag bearer, who is, uh, you can just see her face uh, behind the gentleman in front. She is Maya Kirti Naman. There she is. And she's the Commonwealth Young Person of the Year for 2023. And uh, next to her is the mace bearer. And that is Matthew Ward, who's a Scottish swimmer who competed in the Commonwealth Youth Games in Trinidad and Tobago last summer, and he was extraordinarily successful. He won gold in the 50, 100, and 200 meter backstroke, and also in the 200 meter individual medley, and various other medals as well. He's the most successful Team Scotland athlete. He's got a lot of them around his neck, hasn't he? Youth <laughs> Games history. He has indeed, and he deserves them. You were just talking, Robert, about um, the Duke and Duchess of Gloucester. I mean, it's interesting, isn't it? Because it's one of the events in the calendar that is attended by the majority of the royal family. There's a strong presence here today. There is particularly today, I think, and more so perhaps in recent years. And there, of course, there's the Princess Royal, uh, who is an absolute stalwart um, of the Commonwealth. Uh, the, the fact that um, all the available members of the family are here, I think it is making a point. It's saying how much this matters and the, the princess there who's who's already been on two important commonwealth missions this year she was in sri lanka in january to mark uh, the 50th uh, sorry the 75th uh, anniversary of bilateral relations and, and in, in namibia just last month and now uh, she's coming into uh, to, to to be greeted by the the clergy and the notables of this event let's just take a moment to talk about uh, princess anne because she's been dubbed the hardest working royal and she's a very popular member of the royal family isn't she and she's become something of an icon in recent times <laughs> she she has i think you know i think everyone was very taken by the the role she took i um, mean those sad days after the death of her late majesty she was absolutely central to the the the, the, the royal family saying farewell to elizabeth ii and was absolutely central to the coronation of the king famously riding behind him in the coronation procession and has, has been in, involved with the the Commonwealth all through her adult life. I mean, she's you know very involved on the global stage. She organisations like Save the Children. She's a Royal Olympian. She's on the International Olympic Committee. But through all that, she's very loyal to organisations like the Royal Agriculture Society of the Commonwealth and uh, the Commonwealth Study Conferences that were founded by her father, the Duke of Edinburgh. Uh, and she keeps all these things going. And just in the last few weeks, in fact, she's taken on the presidency of. of arguably the most, uh, one of the most important uh, organisations, the Commonwealth War Graves Commission, which honours the war dead right around the world in over 150 nations. So for her uh, today is, uh, is as important today as it is to any other member of the royal family. And she's involved in uh, so many aspects of public life, over 300 charities, mm. organisations and military regiments in the UK and overseas. And she does devote a large part of her working life to official engagements and visits. She does, and, and she makes sure that, uh, you know, she, that even just the other day, she had to uh, represent the king at a, a funeral of the president of Namibia. She went, there, went, went down to Namibia for the weekend. She was still back on Monday morning for her engagements here in Britain. So uh, she is indefatigable, I think we can say. 
Well, you were mentioning she's just taken over as president of the Commonwealth War Graves Commission. She's taken over from the Duke of Kent, who we can see uh, seated there. And he's been a working member of the royal family for a very long time. He has. I mean, he was uh, so devoted to the, the Commonwealth War Graves Commission. He was its president for over half a century. Uh, and has represented the late Queen at numerous events uh, all around the Commonwealth um, over, over, over many decades. So it's very good to see him here. He's still uh, an official uh, frontline, if you like, member of the royal family, still part of that working unit. So he's here today in that regard. It's interesting. We've been talking a lot about youth and how important uh, young people are to the Commonwealth. But there's this long shared history that will be remarked on again later this year with the 80th anniversary of the D-Day landings, which has a lot of significance. Yes, I mean, we've talked a lot about the things the Commonwealth has in common. Of course, shared sacrifice is absolutely central to that. And, and so many Commonwealth nations played such a key part in, in the D-Day and in the, in the liberation of Europe 80 years ago. Here we see the uh, Duke and Duchess of Edinburgh, another couple who have very strong Commonwealth connections. Uh, and, uh, they're here today wearing multiple Commonwealth hats, if you like. Tell, tell us about them. To what extent well, I mean, are the, they involved uh, in Commonwealth work? The, the Duke of Edinburgh, um, formerly the Earl of Wessex, is the uh, vice patron, vice president of the, the Commonwealth Games Federation. He's very involved in Commonwealth sport, and we've seen uh, uh, athletes um, already uh, here today, and that's something that's the, the, that he's very involved with. I mean, the Commonwealth Games currently, uh, we don't know where the next one's going to be, but uh, he, he's, he's very involved in that. He has, uh, he's also the, he's taken on the Duke of Edinburgh's award scheme from his father, and that, that, that touches on uh, pretty much every nation of the Commonwealth. The Duchess of Edinburgh, we see there, very, very involved in and everything to do with, with empowerment of women across Commonwealth nations and, uh, and and also other issues. I mean, she she became vice patron of the um, of, of the late Queen's uh, Commonwealth Diamond Jubilee Trust, and uh, here we see now uh, the Queen herself. Representing. Ben Oakley was saying a little earlier, she's very, very involved with uh, so many aspects of, of Commonwealth life. speaking to members of the welcoming lineup. And as she arrived, you will have noticed that she was greeted by um, members of a fantastic Punjabi uh, group called Eternal Tal, playing the dole drums. Um, the Prince of Wales there, um, also Robert, who's come in and, uh, well, he's the focus of a lot of attention at the moment, isn't he? Yes, um, I mean, it's very good to see him here today because obviously um, without the King, who is of course the head of the Commonwealth here, all eyes inevitably turn to the Queen and to uh, and to the Prince of Wales, to, to Prince William. Uh, it, we have to remind ourselves that the, the Commonwealth, it's not a hereditary organisation. The, the headship, you, you, in a sense, you earn it. You don't just uh, get it by dint of birth. And, and so it's important, I think, for the Prince of Wales to be here today uh, to show that the, 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 the royal... Um, dedication to the Commonwealth, it, it, it runs through the generations. Uh, and you said how the Queen and the Prince of Wales have had to step up, if you like, mm. given that His Majesty the King is not here today, but he's not here in person, but he will be giving his message. He'll be very much here, uh, the, 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 the Prince of Wales uh, giving the Queen a, a welcoming kiss as they uh, prepare to a process, if you like, as a as a family. Um, I mean, this is a, as I said, this is an important statement. There, there were years when, um, you know, you 
might just have one or two members of the family here, but I think everyone wants to make the point the King might not be here in person, but the monarchy is very much here to support him. But it is important also for the King to show his own dedication to the Commonwealth by recording the message that we're going to hear a little The later. first address by him of the year to the nation.
gather in this house of prayer and place of coronation to rejoice in our common life. We are God's people in a commonwealth of nations which now celebrates its 75th year. As different nations, we can reflect on values of mutual respect, shared dignity, and a commitment to the service of others. We rejoice in the love and affection that binds us in unity and gives us resilience and strength. Looking back on 75 years of shared endeavour, we look forward with hope born out of the knowledge that our work together can build a community, delighting in its diversity, yet still committed to peace and human flourishing. We pray for one another and for our King. Confident in God's grace, we will gather this richness and range of our lives into the shared offering of a common people with one hope under God. From Uganda, the ghetto kids who, through dance, aim to improve the lives of orphans like themselves.
I am honoured to be here today representing the UK company that won the Earthshot Prize in 2022. We are based in Hackney, East London, only metres from the site of the first factory to produce plastic in the world. And whilst we admire the entrepreneurial spirit of those early pioneers, we hope that we will leave behind a rather different legacy. We have developed sustainable packaging made from seaweed and plants. Designed to replace unnecessary single-use plastics, our materials biodegrade naturally. You might have seen our plastic-free food service boxes at a football stadium, or remember our edible energy gels from the London Marathon. Our mission is closely aligned with the interests of the Commonwealth countries, and in particular with those of the small island developing states who are disproportionately affected by the 20 million tonnes of plastic that ends up in our seas each year and the 1.8 billion tonnes of greenhouse gases that the plastic packaging industry emits. Samoa, who is hosting this year's Commonwealth meeting, is one of these island nations and they have chosen the theme of resilience, focusing on how we can build a thriving future together. Resilience is more than just recovering from a crisis quickly. It is bouncing back stronger. And as we innovate new systems and materials for the future, we have the opportunity to build a better world, one that is accountable for its impact and reactive to new learnings, one that is based on nature, as nature is inherently resilient with adaptation to change the very essence of survival. A core element of building a resilient future is, of course, education. With 60% of the Commonwealth's population being under 30, the youth of this community will decide the path of tomorrow. We need to ask governments to reduce greenwashing and to improve labelling to make the properties of materials clear and transparent. Polls have found that three quarters of young people would choose more sustainable products, but in order to make that choice, there needs to be a better alternative available. This is where innovation like our seaweed packaging comes in. And with support from champions like the Prince of Wales, we are leading the way in developing substitute materials. Ultimately, plastic pollution and climate change are global challenges that require both urgent optimism and collective action. The combined and unwavering efforts of the 56 countries of the Commonwealth on these issues gives us hope that together we can achieve change and leave behind a more resilient environment for future generations. And now representing Europe, a very special Commonwealth collaboration, the UK's Callum Scott and Maltese harpist Jacob Portelli. the dark of the night not a star in the sky i can feel your love born against the tide and i see you shining bright like a lighthouse and the wind's got the water running wild but i'll swim to you swim for my life and i pray you
Representing the Commonwealth Chair in Office, the High Commissioner of Rwanda will give the scripture reading. My brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of any kind, consider it nothing but joy, because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its full effect, so that you may be mature and complete, lacking in nothing. If any of you is lacking in wisdom, ask God, who gives to all generously and ungrudgingly, and it will be given to you. But ask in faith, never doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For the doubter, being double-minded and unstable in every way, must not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Blessed is anyone who endures temptation. Such a one has stood the test and will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. Every generous act of giving, with every perfect gift, is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. But be doers of the word, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if there are hearers of the word and not doers, there are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves and, on going away, immediately forget what they were like. Thanks be to God. And now His Majesty the King delivers his Commonwealth Day message. The 75th anniversary of the Commonwealth is a moment to reflect on the remarkable journey that our unique family of free and independent nations has made since 1949. Last year, the Bahamas celebrated its 50th anniversary of independence, as Grenada has this year and Papua New Guinea will next year. Each of these milestones, and many others like them, represent the fulfillment of countless aspirations and the achievement of such remarkable potential. And the Commonwealth's growth, with new members continuing to join our family of nations, 
demonstrates clearly that whilst we may not all have a shared history, we have common ambitions for a better future, working together to build resilience and respond to global challenges. The Commonwealth family is strongest when we are connected through friendship. As I've said before, the Commonwealth is like the wiring of a house, and its people, our energy and our ideas are the current that runs through those wires. Together and individually, we are strengthened by sharing perspectives and experiences, and by offering and borrowing the myriad ways we have each tackled the challenges of our time. This is true both at the level of nations and indeed at the local level. We recognize today that our diversity is our greatest strength. The Commonwealth represents a third of humanity from all regions of the world with all the different experiences, knowledge and aspirations that this brings. Wherever we live, we are united by the many challenges we face, whether it be climate change, the loss of nature, or the social and economic changes that new technologies are bringing. Our diversity means that these challenges affect us all differently and that we experience their impacts in different ways. Their seriousness, however, is common to each one of us. All of this means that we must work together to understand each other's perspectives, including the inequalities and injustices which still resonate to this day. We must find ways of healing and to support each other to pursue solutions. I cannot say often enough that it is by coming together that we create the best chances to improve our world and the lives of people everywhere. Indeed, over the years, countless people across the Commonwealth have been inspired to form their own Commonwealth associations, from lawyers and accountants to business and trade networks, and many more besides. The work they do is absolutely vital, sharing professional knowledge, experience, and expertise across the continents for the betterment of each one of us. The Commonwealth, above all, retains a particular focus on our young people who make up two-thirds of the entire Commonwealth population. Whether in Kenya or Malaysia, Vanuatu or Dominica, Malta or Canada, I never cease to be impressed by their creativity, innovative skills and hard work, often in the most challenging circumstances. Their energy is transforming approaches to development, technology, and preserving and restoring nature, and will, I hope, help to shape and safeguard our common future. Having recently celebrated my own 75th birthday, it warms my heart to reflect on the way the Commonwealth has been a constant throughout my own life, a precious source of strength, inspiration, and pride. In recent weeks, I have been most deeply touched by your wonderfully kind and thoughtful good wishes for my health, and in return, can only continue to serve you to the best of my ability throughout the Commonwealth. My belief in our shared endeavors and in the potential of our people remains as sure and strong as it has ever been. I have no doubt that we will continue to support one another across the Commonwealth as together we continue this vital journey.
clergy from the Abbey and from the neighbouring churches in Westminster will now lead the prayers. Let us pray for the Commonwealth of Nations and give thanks to God for his blessings. Heavenly Father, hear our prayers for every nation represented among us, for their leaders and peoples, that we might care for our common home, celebrate our diversity, and live together in unity, fellowship, and peace that in this 75th year of the Commonwealth, the work of generations may be blessed in its continuance. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers for those suffering as a consequence of war and terrorism, those stricken by natural disaster, for the peoples of Israel, Palestine and Ukraine. For all in danger or distress today, for those working for the relief of suffering and the promotion of peace and justice. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers for the young people of our Commonwealth, that through friendship, shared values, creativity and resilience, they may meet every challenge and opportunity to serve the common good for the flourishing of generations to come in prosperity and peace. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayers. Hear our prayers for His Majesty the King, the head of the Commonwealth, that our bonds of affection may remain strong and our commitment to service be lifelong and steadfast. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray in the words that Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Next, representing the Americas, which comprise Canada and the Caribbean, the Canadian pianist Spencer Klimishin.
The Nigerian British poet Saben Okri will now read his poem Transcending History, specially commissioned this year to mark the 75th anniversary of the Commonwealth. Transcending History. A stick is easily broken. A tree is not so easily cut down. And a forest has a certain grandeur which draws to itself a mythology. People gather, stories happen. This is the friction and magnetism of all those lives, those histories. There are many reasons for nations to come together, form an informal family. Sometimes those reasons have injustice at their root. Sometimes a compelling history brings them together, brings them closer for reasons better than their troubled origins. You can never tell what happens when people hang out together for cultural, historical reasons. Families are formed not only of blood, but affinities. No family ever stands secure without the mortar of respect, without the magnetism of affection. History sometimes shows that we can transcend history and wreathe our flowers together weave our dances, share our technologies, strive for the blossoming of our mutual spirits. But dark forces hover when good people come together. The tendency of the age is to split families and break up magical associations. A willed entropy eats away at the heart of our civilization. One has to be strong to come together. One has to be wise to stay together. Beware the false energy of the fall. Harness the diamond power of the ascent. Sticks are easy to break, but a forest of awareness is a greater force than any family we can make. Baroness Patricia Scotland, the Commonwealth Secretary General, will now lead the act of affirmation to the Commonwealth. In this 75th year of the Commonwealth of Nations, let us now stand to pledge ourselves afresh to uphold and serve the values and fellowship of our unique association. We affirm that every person possesses unique worth and dignity. We affirm our desire for peace amongst all peoples and nations, and our belief in justice for everyone, everywhere. We affirm our respect for the natural world and that we will be stewards of the earth by working together to care for every part of it. We affirm our support for all young people in every part of our Commonwealth and in honouring their ingenuity and imagination, we affirm our belief that the future success of the Commonwealth rests with them. Joining together in kinship affinity and unity, we celebrate the precious diversity of thought, culture, tradition, and experience across our family 
of nations. And we build our sh on shared inheritances. We reiterate our commitment to the values of the Commonwealth Charter, both as an expression of our ideals and aspirations and as a framework for common action. Through our Commonwealth connection, we see each other, hear each other, learn from one another, and cooperate with mutual respect and goodwill to deliver a resilient common future for all our communities and nations. We affirm our belief in the Commonwealth as a powerful influence for good in the world and pledge ourselves to its service now and for the future. With all five nations of the Commonwealth represented in the service today, now for the Pacific, and a traditional Samoan folk song from Isabella Moore and Benson Wilson.
Dean of Westminster, the very Reverend Dr. David Hoyle, now introduces the blessings from four faith leaders. With friends who represent some of the many communities of faith, let us now seek a blessing upon the Commonwealth in all its diversity. Om Sarvesham Swastim Bhavatu Sarvesham Shantim Bhavatu Sarvesham Purnam Bhavatu Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu May there be well-being in all, may there be peace in all, may there be fulfillment in all, may there be auspiciousness in all, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Peace, peace, and peace. Om. In the Torah, our sacred text, our ancestors are not presented as infallible paragons of virtue who never fail, but as flawed leaders who learn and grow on their journey. In the book of Proverbs, we are told, Ki sheva yipol sadik fakam, seven times the righteous person falls and gets up. The tasks ahead require our resilience. When we stumble, the support of one another will make getting up even easier. On behalf of the Jewish community, may the Commonwealth be blessed. <clears throat> the 5th century Jain scripture, the Tattva Sutra, by Acharya Umaswapti, reflects our belief that every living being, from a plant to a human, has a soul and cannot live independently of one another. The, con the text contains the aphorism Paraspa Graho Jivana. This is translated as souls render services to one another, which means that all life is bound together by mutual support and interdependence. On behalf of the Jain community, may the Commonwealth be blessed. The Holy Quran, God does not burden the soul beyond what it can bear. Hold fast to God's rope altogether. Do not split into factions. Remember God's favor to you. Persevere and be more steadfast. Be prepared and always be mindful of God so that you may prosper. On behalf of the Muslim community, may the Commonwealth be blessed. God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the Church, the King, the Commonwealth, and all people, peace and concord, and to us sinners, life everlasting, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. So today's service of celebration for Commonwealth Day comes to an end, a true celebration of all 56 member nations. Robert, Robert Hardman, you've been with me watching this throughout. Your thoughts on the event? Well, Rita, I, I think it, uh, as ever, captured the one of the crucial point of the Commonwealth, which is its youth. I mean, there's extraordinary and uh, very powerful displays, some beautiful music. 
Um, and also, of course, it was great to see the king addressing the nation and the Commonwealth the first time we've seen him, heard him address us directly um, this year since his uh, medical diagnosis. And that was a, a forceful and upbeat message, forward-looking message, uh, in which he talked about the vital journey ahead for the Commonwealth and um, particularly placed that emphasis on, on the, the fact that it is so important. It, it depends on youth, it depends on the young, it depends on the 60 percent who are under the age of 30 and he talked about their transformative uh, work and now we see the Queen and the other members of the family but led by the Queen um, leading the monarchy, leading the royal family um, out of the Abbey. And what I think for for all of them really is it's, it's been a day that has sort of said you know this is a this is a royal team running behind ahead of the Commonwealth who they not here in person is much here in spirit. The Queen looking very spring-like in her pale blue coat dress which for those who are interested is designed by Bruce Oldfield and uh, her hat is uh, a Philip Treacy hat and that beautiful brooch actually belonged to the late Queen Elizabeth II. Yes we, we understand that's one of the, the late late Queen's brooches so a, a, a very uh, a touching and important nod uh, today to the late Queen who of course made this event her own. She actually uh, devised, if you like, this service at the Abbey. It was all down to her back in the 70s that this first began as a celebration of all the faiths, all the people of the Commonwealth. Well, as Her Majesty Queen Camilla prepares to depart and as wider members of the royal family prepare to take their leave, it is time to say goodbye from all of us here at Westminster Abbey. A very good afternoon. <laughs>